Hey GearHeads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that red truck up there, that is the 2023 GMC Canyon AT4. I am at my favorite off-road proving grounds of Barnwell Mountain, just outside of Gilmer, Texas. Pretty sure she's sitting at the top of the mountain right now. And I'm gonna show you just how I got there in this mid-size pickup truck and why that's probably the vehicle I would be apt to buy as much as I love these high-powered off-road uh, full-size pickup trucks and all their crazy capability. Stay tuned. Before we get on top of the mountain, I do want to give you a quick tour of what makes this AT4 so special and what makes it off-road capable versus some of the other pickups in the class, even its cousin over at Chevrolet with the Colorado. So I'm not going to pop the hood. You can go see my video see under the hood, but this does get the full power version of that 2.7 liter turbo four. So we're talking uh, 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. And it is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. I can say I've got no complaints on the powertrain in this one, especially when we get to four low. It really likes to hold that power. Now, unfortunately, well, let's get here to the side really quick and I'll talk to you about off-road angles on this one. So we have 9.6 inches of ground clearance. Again, that's probably that solid rear axle back there because that is the same as a 4Runner TRD Pro, many other different vehicles in the class. Uh, but we have a 33.3 .3 degree approach angle, a 22.3 departure, a 20.9 breakover on this. And I'm gonna show you just some interesting features this would compare on the outside to the, a, a blend between the Chevy Colorado Trail Boss and the ZR2. And the reason I say that is because right up here, this is a ZR2 style cutout to give your front wheel first access, your, uh, your front tires first access uh, to whatever you're getting to if you take the right line. Because unfortunately, as we kind of dig under here, this is all plastic here. So yes, we do have the Island Off-Roader red tow hooks on this, but nothing but plastic on this model. I would definitely opt uh, for the AT4X or look into getting the uh, steel or aluminum skid plates underneath uh, just because, yeah, plastic underbody protection. We do have that 33.3 .3 approach angle. Uh, we've experienced uh, a, a few issues where we just kiss the ground, uh, but that would be just a nice addition. Now, you can, for whatever reason, uh, if you're crazy enough, get 20 inch wheels and tires on an AT4, but why on earth would you? Uh, these are the standard 265-65 R18 Goodyear Wrangler Territory ATs. You can get a slightly more aggressive MT tire wrapped on these 18 inch stout wheels. Do not get the 20s if you plan on doing even what I am doing here, just kind of posting up uh, in this area as I am right now. I will come around to the side here and I would say perhaps maybe the driver's side is gonna be a little bit easier to show you exactly uh, what I'm gonna talk about here in a second. So I'll just talk about how much we are stuffed over here, the articulation we do have on a live axle 
rear on this pickup truck because we are just kissing the dirt over here on the passenger side or on the driver's side. And that's where I can talk about here. We've got old school leaf springs. So many different vehicles uh, in the full size segment and now trickling into this uh, midsize segment are ditching leaf springs for coilovers and a coil sprung rear suspension. The new Tacoma is gonna have rear coils. So this is a bit antiquated technology, especially in 2023, 2024 moving forward. We don't even get Rancho branded shocks like some of the uh, Z71 trail bosses and the like in the big uh, Silverado full size. But you do see we have quite a bit of articulation down here and it does look like we've got a little bit of protection there on that uh, fuel tank back there. But coming down and looking underneath, you can see just how far the uh, frame rides under the body of this vehicle. And you can see those four black uh, rubber stops right here. And this right here, I do believe on vehicles with rock sliders, that is actually where they attach. They do not attach to the uh, frame here that actually attach to the body side. So if you're really wanting to get serious about it, uh, I would go aftermarket and get something that attaches to the frame. Another thing that kind of makes this a hybrid between the Chevy Colorado Trail Boss and the Z71 is the fact that not only do we get the full power engine, which even the uh, Colorado Z71 doesn't get, but we get the uh, two inch lift and the wider track on this one. So all GMCs get the wider track than the uh, Colorado equivalent uh, anywhere else in the lineup until you get into the ZR2, which gets the full wide track and three inches of lift, which the AT4X gets. So that's just a little bit on the outside. I'm gonna do what I can uh, to peek inside and show you here before going to uh, fully interior mounted cameras. We've got a full digital readout here. We've got the smaller eight inch screen. You have to get a Denali or the AT4X to get the full, I believe it's a 12 or 11 inch screen here in the gauge cluster. But this is a standard size uh, infotainment screen and you can see all the different drive modes. We'll go into that more as we're driving, but you can see uh, we hit some limits <laughs> exploring out today. One downside to this pickup truck is the everything is here in the center console. You can see hill descent controls in here, drive and park. This is where you go to traction control, hill descent control. Like, I give physical buttons. Look, you have all these toggles here. Add a couple more, move these around. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? This does have the eight speed automatic transmission, which Again, we have not experienced much or any trouble with out here. And I really like uh, the effort and energy that General Motors put into the off-road ability of this vehicle. You can tell that is where they spent the extra money to make this truck really something special. All right, gearheads, showing you some technical stuff in here that I absolutely want to show off before we get moving in this. Inside the screen, there is a lot of off-road tech, including air down mode, which will allow you to set a target PSI for your tires, and you can go around to each of them, airing them down, and the vehicle will honk at you uh, when you reach that tire pressure. That's pretty cool. That's built into it here. You also have off-road pages. So you have three different off-road pages here. One set for Baja that kind of gives you an off-road racing uh, view here. And then we've got terrain mode, which is really more what I'm gonna be using today because it gives you pitch and roll and you can see your tire pressures, stuff like that. And then there's an overlanding mode, which really gives you your heading and your altitude. All really great. I really like down here, you also have your Latin long. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. But like I said, I'm gonna keep it in terrain. I'm actually gonna go ahead, shift to neutral, put it in for low and I'll let it start working on uh, that with this two-speed auto track transfer case. And then uh, I'm gonna spin the dial here, not to go to off-road, but to go to terrain, because one of the trick features of this terrain mode that I absolutely love 
is the one pedal driving. And that allows you as the driver to only have to focus, need to focus on the acceleration of the vehicle. As soon as you let off, much like an EV with regenerative braking, as you let off uh, the accelerator, it's gonna brake for you so that it'll allow you to get really technical uh, with your uh, throttle modulation as you move over obstacles and uh, as you kind of creep over stuff, makes it a very nice uh, off-roading compa companion um, here in uh, the GMC Canyon AT4. And then you can see as we get up to speed, uh, doesn't really hamper overall speed of the vehicle any, uh, but you know, we are still in four low, so it will kind of crab on you just a little. Now, we are at our favorite set of obstacles here at our favorite off-roading place, Barnwell Mountain. If you are in the East Texas area, anywhere near Gilmer, Texas, absolutely come out, check out Barnwell Mountain. So much fun out here. We have our standard set of uh, trails that we test on out here, but there is so much to do. Right now we are on Twister. And I can tell you since the last vehicle we brought out here, which I do believe was the F-150 Raptor R, uh, things have gotten a little bit more torn up uh, than previous. So things are just a little more drastic out here than they were last time. And here we are in a mid-sized pickup truck. Uh, not quite as extreme. We have got 33 inch tall tires. We've got um, no true lockers in this one. And uh, we'll, we'll just see kind of how, how it does and how we can maneuver, especially without cameras in this one. Uh, for me, the cameras are really only beneficial for seeing my spotter. Uh, when the hood is in the way of seeing my spotter, makes it a little difficult to off-road and make sure I'm going the right direction. But you can see here, we're doing just fine. Uh, heading off-road, kind of going over a cliff here. And then this is where this mid-size pickup truck really comes in handy. That F-150 Raptor was just so big and massive riding down this trail right here. Uh, this whole park is really too tight for full-size pickup trucks. And so this right here uh, is very simple here in this mid-size pickup truck, which itself isn't small. Uh, we've got that wider stance than all base model Colorados on this. We've got the lift on this one. So it definitely sits out bigger and burlier than a, uh, I don't wanna say a comparable Colorado because this one is essentially the uh, trail boss uh, with a bigger, better interior, more luxurious interior, um, but does pretty good out here uh, when it comes to the luxurious side of things. The uh, um, AC works excellent in this one and the ventilated seats too are uh, a welcome addition here in this one. Now we do have that locker in the back. It's a mechanical locker. So it waits until there's slippage before it actually locks up back there. So we kind of stutter stepped back there just a moment ago, but you can see we're just climbing over this stuff pretty easily and nicely. No big struggles here on this one. Uh, now we've got this little rock coming up on driver's side front that I'm gonna have to kind of go up and over. There it is, and up. And yeah, for the most part, this thing is just handling all the terrain that we're coming across very nicely and easily. Let's see, come up and over. Again, 360 cameras would be really nice for when my view right now is the sky. You could probably see from that back camera I can see my spotter's head and oh, I can't see him at all. So what good is a spotter if you can't see him? There he is again. So we're gonna come climb up over some of these ruts. Again, one of the great things about coming out here to Barnwell versus some of the events we go to where all the obstacles are staged is 
these change and evolve over time. Just like I said, Twister isn't the same Twister trail uh, that we took the F-150 Raptor down. It has changed since the last time we were out here. See, uh, <laughs> needing a little bit of slippage back there in the back before we fully locked up. But otherwise, you know, handling this very well. Anyway, back to my point about the terrain out here changes with weather, with uh, different events that come out here with a bunch of uh, Jeeps out here one weekend or a bunch of uh, tacos out here one weekend, they can really wear down the trail. A big storm can absolutely change the terrain of what once was, uh, which leads me to this next little obstacle. I'm gonna go up, actually. I went down it earlier, but I'm actually gonna swing around and go up it because it is an obstacle we used to take crossovers through and uh, now I wouldn't take anything short of an off-road pickup truck through um, just because it is quite weathered I will say there there is a lot of um, pitch and articulation in it and going up it is definitely going to be the more treacherous angle uh, than going down it uh, especially because I'll be working against gravity as I climb it so it is one of my favorite things. It's usually like the first thing I do when I come out here, uh, just because it's, it's kind of that standard thing that I know, uh, if you can do this, um, I kind of know its limits there. Like I said, there's a lot of pitch and roll. You can watch here on my screen exactly what I'm gonna be uh, going through here as we go down and around and through. Um, and this being a mid-sized pickup truck is more better suited size-wise to this small little trail as we go through it. Ugh. Turning radius and four low. Um, but I mean, you can see I, I've got a uh, 18 degree roll, 11 degree roll. So we're definitely going through here. Uh, going just fine. I do like how this shows you the max that you've experienced out here. So just to know, okay, I've done 18 already, 13 shouldn't be a problem. So I've done a 22 degree pitch, I'm currently at 14, that shouldn't be a problem. So very interesting. I like the tech uh, that GMC has built into this. Uh, makes it very easy to come out here and wheel Again, I always recommend uh, bringing a spotter uh, to be eyes uh, where you can't be. No matter how many cameras you have on your vehicle, no matter how many screens you have here in front of you telling you this, that, and the other, eyes outside the vehicle are always more valuable than tech inside the vehicle. That's just my two cents. But you can see just how good this thing handles all that stuff. Like I said, we used to take crossovers uh, out and over that uh, before it got really washed out. And now it, it really is something you need a little more ground clearance for and uh, maybe some four wheel traction uh, versus what some all wheel drive crossovers uh, offer you. Uh, this thing, it, it is proving its metal. I will say GMC clearly, clearly uh, put the money in this vehicle in its off-road tech and its off-road capability, what it's able to do uh, when you get it off the beaten path. And uh, this thing truly is a, a fun vehicle to have out here at Barnwell in all these different environments. It is quite fun indeed. I will say the sound of that Turbo 4 uh, as I'm driving around in four low. I mean, I don't hate it, but would I rather <laughs> a big V8? Yeah. Do I think they could fit a 5.3 under the hood? Possibly. And it's a shame that we only get the one option in this. I would really like to see something like a baby Duramax in this uh, versus just the one option of a turbo four but again talking to off-road ability visibility out of this is very good it's very square uh, the lines on it are good 
I can see where I'm going, where I'm putting tires. I would like some additional cameras just to aid inside here. Uh, but for the most part, I've got no problems, no issues seeing where I'm going, where I'm putting this vehicle and what I'm putting it through. And you can see as we twist uh, this vehicle up, uh, we're gonna be slipping a little in the back, pulling a little up front, but I really like coming through here in vehicles that can handle it. And this terrain mode really is the star of this vehicle. I am thoroughly enjoying just how easy it is to modulate forward momentum or lack thereof uh, with this terrain mode. I just wish I had actual lockers in this. I think that would be the real killer in this, which you can get on the AT4X, which makes me wonder, who's this truck really for? Like the, the moderate off-roader, probably. This thing is, like I said, clearly better off-road than on. It's not a terrible pickup truck, but it clearly came into its own when I got it here off-road and has made it a whole lot more fun just being in its element. This is absolutely uh, where it is happiest. So I will say, I'm loving the maneuverability of the size of this platform. I know I'm in four low and that makes it less maneuverable, uh, but this is definitely way more maneuverable than the last full size, last few full size vehicles that I've brought out here, which have been the Silverado, the Ram, <laughs> the F-150, like those things are just so big and trying to get them through some of the places out here uh, really makes you wonder what those trucks are meant to do because um, th again, just the maneuverability of this midsize platform, uh, I love it. This is why I would buy a, a midsizer is just being able to get in here and do stuff like this. And just to see exactly what it's capable of uh, in some tricky terrain that may be hard to get to in something bigger than this. Oh boy, he's really gonna put me through some technical stuff. I don't know. I don't know, gearheads. We're really gonna test out the components that make this an off-road vehicle. Going down the front, come on. Lock, lock, lock. That's where having a real, actual driver selectable locker would have come in handy. That was treacherous. I had to give it more throttle, and then when it finally got traction, it almost wanted to do too much. Nope.
can. Lockers would really make this thing better in these very technical situations. But I cannot tell you just how impressive that mountain was that we just made it over. Again, guys, a good spotter is unbelievable. Get yourself a good spotter. Eric, get over here. Uh, down about five or 10 pounds, I think, saying that that's all that this has to give. Yeah. Get yourself a good spotter. Invaluable. Don't go wheeling without one. I don't care what kind of technology you've got built in. I never would have tried that without having eyes outside, knowing what to do. He had a ZR2, uh, Jen, before this. So, like, get yourself a good spotter. I have done that without a spotter, and I've ripped my drive shaft in half. So, saves you money to yes. have at least one friend. <laughs> get some eyeballs outside the vehicle that know what they're doing. All right, gearheads, Eric's jumped in with me. We're gonna do a little trail called Linda Gale, see what this thing is capable of. If necessary, he'll pop out. Um, I don't think there's too much down this particular trail uh, that this uh, pickup can't handle, but uh, it's one of my favorites. I just can't bring anything down that I've had recently. I've been dying for something midsize to be able to take down uh, one of my favorite trails here just because it's, it's kind of scenic. Uh, that, that's my favorite thing about this is uh, just being able to see all the scenery out here at Barnwell. Uh, right now we've got gravity on our side and I can definitely feel uh, the one pedal kicking in on this one. Uh, I will say most of this trail is not difficult. What'd you say? It's one and a half diamond. One and a half diamond, which is a half diamond above the main tree. Yeah. So you are at risk of scrubbing your belly on some of this. Just like don't... this right here. Nope. Good. Close. Got nine and some odd inches of uh, ground clearance on this. Um, but yeah. This really is a scenic trail. It's so much so that I have come out here. I know I preach, bring a spotter, bring a spotter. I came out here without a spotter and my five-year-old strapped into his car seat in the back. So like it, it's a scenic trail more than it is a technical trail. But I know you people that have been out here to Barnwell, I've gotten the comments. He didn't even take it down a trail. Linda Gale trail. Here we are. we are. I've done one where I'm like at the top of Barnwell. That's up there. Okay. Oh, that's way deep down. And we're... Th Linda Gale will feed into a three diamond. Yeah. If you take a wrong turn. And I think I've done that before with my buddy in his stock Bronco. And I've got footage of him coming downhill at me and teetering towards me. And my heart stopped. I can't imagine what it felt like inside that Bronco. It's <laughs> so, probably... <laughs> That's at that That's moment clincher. you remember it's still the bank's truck. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't my truck. It's bank's truck. I do really like what I'm seeing with these tires. They're kind of a they seem like a mild all terrain that's sort of highway biased, but I can tell you the way the pattern sits, as long as you don't get into mud, these are gonna grip like football cleats. It's got a bunch of small blocks. There's not a center smooth line for a highway lane down the center. It's got little blocks all over the place. So for stuff like this, until you need to walk up a ledge, this sandy, silty, clay, small gravel, rocks, great tires for this kind of stuff. It's only until you get into the huge boulders and obviously mud, they're not made for that. But for what most people are gonna get into and what we're doing, <laughs> they're actually incredible tires. You nothing. Know, I can. Close my eyes then. I can't. I watched him do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, full size would have. Yeah, we are in a ravine right now. I'm sure they could probably. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's the ground. ground. The ground is above my shoulder here. <laughs> we are cutting through the dirt. Again, perks of a midsize. Like, I cannot express to you why would you buy a full-size off-roader if this is your intended purpose yeah, unless you can go out in like the sand dunes or something wide open yeah but in the east texas area and a lot of like the appalachia area and that sort of stuff 
with all these trees, you, ju you just can't do a full size. And, no. And expect to actually get down in some real trails. Oh my all right. gosh. This is the first water I've seen in 14 days. Yeah, buddy. That's it. The danger of following someone like this is for them. This is a walk in the park. Yeah. For us. It may not be. <laughs> we can't walk over roots. It would actually punch the side. This is going to be a tip. Watch us some extra room for a tree. Roll is at 15. We've got 18% maximum roll before. Yeah. I like, they, they've, they've put the money into the off-road ability of this. And you can tell from a previous generation to this one, a lot of the ZR2 bit technology and, and stuff like that has trickled down into the Z71 and AT4 trims. All these off-road readouts were not in the previous body styles, all-terrain GMC Z71 Colorado. Corey, I don't think we're gonna make it up there. <laughs> he just walked up it. He's gone. Over. With his foot hanging out. <coughs> He's on his third beer of the day. We can make it, but I'm gonna let me, let me yeah. Let me go. I'm gonna give you a little spot spot. Yo, Eric had to get out for this. Alright. <laughs> I am in four low terrain mode. I am just intrigued as to what the angle is that I'm about to climb up this vehicle. So Eric just stuck his leg down a rut right down the middle. My Jeep buddy's coming back down. He's coming down the the trifficult side. Right now we're at an 11 degree incline. It's not so much like my driveway is 13, but it is paved and smooth and flat as it goes up. This is riddled with rocks that move and ruts from washouts. Here we are, 13, this is my driveway right here. Mm. 14, 15. I tell you what, as nifty as these pitch and roll meters are, I'm not watching them when I'm doing this stuff. So I did happen to see when we hit this tilt warning on the roll, I can't tell you when the tilt happened on pitch, but uh, I'm at 15 degrees now. This is more than my driveway. It's not insignificant. We'll put it that way. Um, only a 1% roll on this one. The one pedal is basically holding me in place right now. We're about to climb something right now. Go climb in a rock face and inching through in between trees. Ain't no way a full size is making it through here. I will say, having a top dead center marking on the steering wheel would be. Fantastic right now. 
Not gonna lie. Made it. Whew! I do believe we went up the more difficult side to get to the top of the mountain. Might have to do us a 45 point U-turning. We're not going down? Hold this. <laughs> Some All right, gearheads, there you have it. If I were to spend the money, this AT4 has been a lot of fun today. It has put so many smiles on my face. I've laughed at some of the things and obstacles I've taken it over. But if I'm putting my money on the table and I had to stay within the GM fleet, I'm going with the AT4X. It's just a little bit more capable. You get those electronic lockers front and rear you just get more capability that there are places where yes this thing made it through but it would have been a lot less butt clinching to do it in the at4x and it's not that much more than this at4 this really is for somebody who's not going to do as much as we did today but I do want to show you this video just to see how capable this truck really is. If you like this, want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time we post a new video. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. As for me, I'm going to go have a little bit more fun in this midsize pickup that is infinitely more maneuverable than a full-size competitor and comes in a little bit cheaper. Until next time, gearheads, bye. Texas here, we've traded out silt for, I don't know if you've ever walked on thick beds of pine needles. It's slick. It's like the devil's snow. Yeah. It's like you don't get traction and it's also highly flammable and snakes live in it. Yeah. It's just, it's really a weird combination. Welcome to East Texas. Yeah. <laughs>